Heart failure is defined as a clinical syndrome where cardiac output is inadequate for the metabolic requirements of the body. Either the left side or the right side of the heart can fail. There are two types of left-sided heart failure. Systolic heart failure or heart failure with reduced ejection fraction is when the left ventricle loses its ability to contract normally and not enough blood is pumped around the body. Diastolic heart failure or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is when the left ventricle loses its ability to normally relax because the muscle has become stiffer, so the heart is unable to fill with enough blood to pump around the body. Right-sided heart failure usually occurs with left-sided, but it can occur on its own. This happens when there is a pre-existing lung condition that causes a backlog of blood back to the right ventricle, such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, pulmonary hypertension, or a pulmonary embolism. There may also be acute exacerbations of heart failure in new onset or decompensated chronic heart failure. Some of the risk factors for developing heart failure are age over 70, previous ischemic heart disease or myocardial infarction, diabetes, hypertension and atrial fibrillation. Clinical manifestations of heart failure can be summarised in the Framingham criteria. Some of the major criteria are acute pulmonary edema, cardiomegaly, neck vein distension, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea or orthopnea. These occur when a patient is lying flat and fluid builds up in their lungs, causing them to abruptly awaken during the middle of the night, feeling extremely short of breath. Hepatojugular reflux and an S3 gallop heart sound. Minor criteria include a nocturnal cough, peripheral edema in the ankles, and tachycardia. The New York Heart Association classification system is used to categorise clinical severity of heart failure. In class 1, there is no limitation or shortness of breath experienced in any activities. In class 2, people are comfortable at rest, but on activity there is mild limitation and shortness of breath. In class 3, there are limitations on any activity and shortness of breath on minimal exertion. The person is only comfortable at rest. And in class 4, any physical activity brings discomfort and shortness of breath also occurs at rest. The gold standard investigation for heart failure is a transthoracic echocardiogram. This allows us to accurately determine the biventricular, systolic and diastolic function. An electrocardiogram, or ECG, may show evidence of underlying coronary artery disease and a prolonged QRS duration. A chest x-ray may reveal the signs of heart failure. These can be remembered by ABCDE, alveolar edema, curly B lines, cardiomegaly, dilated upper lobe vessels, and pleural effusions. A molecule called NT-proBNP, or brain natriuretic peptide, is released during myocardial cell stretching. As a result, a high level of NT-proBNP supports a diagnosis of heart failure. A low result may be used to rule out decompensated heart failure and raise the possibility of a pulmonary cause for the symptoms, but an average level suggests a potential non-cardiac cause for the dyspnea, such as COPD. And brain natriuretic peptide is also sensitive to other biological factors such as age, sex, weight, and renal function, so elevated levels don't always mean a cardiac cause. For baseline of patients, do a full blood count, liver function tests, and electrolytes. Management for an acute exacerbation or decompensation of heart failure can be remembered by iPod man, gain IV access, positioning, sitting up, high flow oxygen therapy for oxygen saturations less than 90%, loop diuretic such as frusamide, diamorphine given slowly with an antiemetic, nitrates if there is myocardial ischemia or severe hypertension. After stabilization, the longer term management for heart failure can be split into drugs that reduce mortality and drugs that control symptoms. Drugs that reduce mortality in systolic heart failure are ACE inhibitors and beta blockers, and these are given together as the first line of management. We can also give aldosterone antagonists, such as spironolactone. If an ACE inhibitor is intolerable, 
Beta blockers and angiotensin receptor blockers are the first line. We may also try hydralazine, and digoxin is used if there is coexisting atrial fibrillation. Drugs that control the symptoms are drugs such as loop diuretics. These are given to control the fluid overload. Alongside medication, lifestyle changes such as eating less salt, monitoring weight, and exercising should be tried. If there are still persistent symptoms, cardiac resynchronization therapy by an implantable cardiac defibrillator can be done. If this is unsuitable, then biventricular pacemakers can be used. If this is ineffective, then we can consider a heart transplant for these patients. In summary, we've looked at the definitions for heart failure, the risk factors associated with it, the classification for clinical severity, the clinical manifestations such as pulmonary edema, distended neck veins, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, nocturnal cough and ankle edema. The investigations such as echocardiogram, ECG, chest x-ray and BNP. And the management, acutely remembered by iPod Man, medications that reduce mortality and control symptoms and any cardiac devices or heart transplant. Thank you for watching, be sure to share the video if you found it useful and keep up to date on recapmed.com.